can't choose any of you guys to be the mole. This like, is gonna be like, the even me thing. myself. Like it's like I think I'm the mole, honestly. <laughs> I think we just talk about our disabilities. I, I prefer disorder. D yeah. Disorder, yeah. yeah. Um, I was diagnosed in middle school, and then I transitioned to a school for people on the spectrum. Once I graduated middle school and went to that school, I kind of really enjoyed where I was at and everything. This is really hard because there's like so many <laughs> eyes on me already. It's just it's just taken a while to accept that I have a disorder. There's people who I've met myself who say you you have autism. And my family would be like, did you tell them you have an uh, did, you, did you tell them you have a disability? No, I don't think I need to. But reality, it really does help to know that I do have autism. They first suspected me of being autistic when I was five, but they they were they hesitated to diagnose me because I was too intelligent. I mean, that's a compliment I'm right there, being too intelligent. I feel like in some ways it's a little bit of an insult. I was diagnosed at the age of two. I don't see it as a disorder or a disability because I don't see my autism as something that's negatively affected my life because like I like who I I am, I like the way I think, and I don't want to change a single thing about myself. Honestly, like being here is like, we have to, oh, go ahead, Amanda. Sorry, I've spoken so much. I personally see autism as a disability. I have a master's in disability studies. The medical model of disability inherently says that autism or any other disability is within our own fault and that we are the cause of the disability. But the social model of disability says that society is the cause of the disability. So autism is a disability because society is not made for me. That disability comes from without, not within. I grew up autistic and deaf, and I grew up feeling like I was such an outcast, and, and you know, and I was the odd one out. Oh, hey, I just used the name of the, that was fun. I was diagnosed um, when, I, when I was four years old, and um, it's, um, you know, like, it's, all, it's always been a difficult process for me, you know, like, basically going up, you know, going, going to school and everything, um, you know, know that people don't perceive me as, as this normal guy, so I figure, I figure if I'm going to be this autistic person, you know, like, I might, might as well be, be the best autistic person now that I can be, you know, I always... Preach! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I always uh, try my best to excel in school, you know, I always um, tend to be, like, one of the smartest, smartest kids in school, you know, you know, that's a whole stereotype. I would consider myself a late bloomer. I was diagnosed at the age of 22. I went most of my life um, always knowing that there was there's something different about me, but I couldn't put my finger on it. The reason why I only got diagnosed this year was because I recently moved to a large metropolitan area that has many resources, yeah. and so that was um, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life because I have access to, to therapy, and I was finally able to get an answer that I was always looking for. I really, really struggled to fit in. I really struggled to um, be able to come up with the right words to get other kids to want to talk to me. And so I, uh, I stood out pretty badly. Uh, and that continued throughout my entire time in grade school. I remember first feeling what depression was when I was around six. So when I was in university, they make us do these psychological studies because I was studying psychology mm -hmm. and they have different things you can apply for and I noticed one of them was um, they were studying autism in women specifically like people who are older so I applied and that was how I got my diagnosis which was like I was 21 then my wife and like one of my friends are actually the only people that n know I've been diagnosed so Surprise family or friends, anyone who's watching. It was like an eye opener. It was kind of bittersweet because it was like, I'm happy now. I have answers to all things that were going on before that I thought there was might have been something wrong with me. There is nothing wrong with you, okay? You're yeah. amazing. Yeah. I Thank agree you. with that. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree now. <laughs> Should I go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I was diagnosed with all, when I was a child, but I didn't know I was autistic because, I mean, as a two, three, four year, and I mean, I don't know how, <laughs> One even knows what it's supposed to be up with them, so it's definitely hard to like to speak in a group situation because I can never tell the rules of like how, how to, like when to talk and when to speak up. It's kind of like just jumping in like right when you're kind of feeling like it. Uh, plus, I've also blocked a lot of uh, my childhood memories from trauma. Trauma. Uh, <laughs> so I lived my whole life just 
wondering why I couldn't connect to people Understand, like, understand each other. Yeah, I, can I ask yeah. you guys a questions about like um, what what are stimulation stimulants? Like, do you guys like chew gum or do you guys like have anything that you guys do specifically to like keep you guys calm or keep you guys? Go ahead, Amanda. The color pink. The color right. pink. Okay. That's it's my right favorite right color right in the whole world. My whole room is pink at home. I my bed is pink. Baby. My bed yes, is pink. Yes, and my pillow is pink. And my rug is pink. And my carpet is pink. I even have a framed pink picture. My and most of my clothes are pink. I love pink. It's the best color in the whole world. Okay. Okay. I've I never love, heard I love color. blue too. I like blue too, but pink is better. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's subjective. How do you guys feel about the term high functioning? Honestly, I don't like that. Term I didn't at really all. think about it too much. I, I don't think I think about it. I, that yeah. Autism that much is too much of a spectrum. So many people with autism have so many different experiences. I can't choose any of you guys to be the mole. This like, is going to be like, the hardest thing. Even me, thing. myself, like, it's like, I think I'm the mole, honestly. Like, <laughs> like oh, they were like, try to find the mole. And we're like, maybe there's none. There's no mole. <laughs> just go on. Well, even the person who's neurotypical might just be an un undiagnosed autistic. Yeah. You never know that. You never know about that. I mean, like, damn, all this relates. Wait a second. Huh. The mole might not be neurotypical. Just because someone doesn't have autism doesn't mean that mole could have like ADHD or OCD yeah. and, and, yeah. and, could, yeah. and could be overlapping the symptoms that are that could be associated with autism as well. My kid has a genetic condition that um, is not autism, but it does manifest behaviorally and neurologically in, in many ways that are similar to autism. So when, um, when people interact with my kid, they often see an autistic child. But my kid doesn't is an autistic. Does autism run in um, any of your guys' family? I realized I was autistic because my little uh, half brother, he's like he's five years old. Well, I guess he's eight, seven now. Whoops, I don't know his age. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I see him. I'm like, huh? I wasn't I like that when I was a kid? My mom was like, yeah, yeah, because we thought so, we thought you're autistic too. I was like, what? And I just found out oh. that my that my youngest nephew had, was just recently diagnosed with autism as well. So, but luckily he had an uncle who who already experienced some everything that he's going to experience, and I can end up be, awesome. and I and I could be a mentor towards him. Yeah, my dad is an undiagnosed autistic. Sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go ahead. Do you ever like wake up and feel like? you're not autistic and like, or like you have a disability, you're like, this is just me. Like, yes, it's, it's called masking. I think I could be, be seen as neurotypical passing sometimes because I try to hide as much symptoms as possible because I was trained to do so at a very early age. People that don't have um, experience with others who have autism, uh, they expect it to stand out and that's not always the case. You know, I, I, I mean, we all, we all look like humans. I think you can blame that partly on, you know, the media, how, how they betray yeah. us. We don't really yeah. have a good representation like, of like us. No, like, we don't. <laughs> what that movie with Dustin Hoffman, no, Rain, Rain Man, you know? Yeah, yeah where yeah. like, where, you know, you, you having, you being on the spectrum, all of it made me, you, you're good at gambling. I wish I was good at gambling or That's something. Funny. None of them have the same experiences that I do. So there's no way to have pinpointed, oh, this person is more quiet, this person is more social awkward. There's no way to have tell who was autistic or not. On the count of three, will the mole please raise their hand? One, two, three. Oh! oh. 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 Who could have seen that coming? I totally didn't see that coming. I was shook. I, I, I was like, no, like, no, it cannot be her. It can't, it can't be her. I never would have guessed. I actually didn't lie about anything. I just um, flipped out autism with FASD. And it stands for Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder. I was exposed to alcohol when I was inside my mom in the womb for the first five months. And um, you can kind of think of FAS D as a spectrum, just like um, ASD. Even though she might not have been autistic, there are a lot of overlaps between autism and many other neurological disabilities. FASD is never, never talked about. I've never met a single person who shares that, ex that diagnosis with me. What differences do you see between people with autism versus... I actually see a ton of similarities. And I, I wouldn't want to, um, you know, discredit anybody else's experience, but autism does run in my family very heavily. My dad has autism, I have a sister that has autism, and I have quite a few cousins who have autism. And I also have quite a few friends who have autism. Okay. Damn, we're not your first. <sighs> <laughs> the autism community accepts you. Yeah. I love you guys. Getting a diagnosis can be a whirlwind of emotions. 
As long as you stay true to yourself, I promise you everything's gonna end up okay. We are more than the label that defines us. At each label we have is a whole spectrum. A diagnosis does not define somebody. Everybody is completely unique, whether you're neurotypical or neurodivergent. Thank you. Thank you.